Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we'll be doing Unit 1, Lesson 7 on Greatest Common Factors. We've been working a lot with factoring in this unit and taking a number and breaking it down into a product, right? And now, just like we did with least common multiples or greatest common multiples, we are going, least common multiples, we're going to be now finding the greatest common factors of two numbers. All right, let's jump into that though with our first exercise where we do some background review of things that we've done before. All right, exercise number one. Let's take a look at the whole numbers 24 and 40. Letter A says, write each of the numbers as the product of two whole numbers in as many ways as possible. Then list the factors of each number. All right, this is simple enough. Let me factor 24 in as many ways as possible and then list its factors. We've done 24 quite a bit. And then I want you to work on 40 and then we'll move on to the rest of the problem. So 24, let's take a look. Well, maybe the easiest factorization of 24 obviously is one times 24. All right, but then we'll also have two times 12, three times eight, and four times six. This gives us factors of 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. All right, so simple enough. I may have impinged on a little bit of the room here. But what I'd like you to do right now is I'd like you to pause the video and find all factorizations of 40 and list all factors of 40. Take a moment to do that. All right, let's get right to it. 40, well, let's see, obviously, one times 40, two times 20, mm, three, no, but four, four times 10, five times eight, uh, six, seven, nope, that's it. So factors of one, two, four, five, eight, 10, 20, and 40, all right? So both of these numbers have a lot of factorizations and both of these numbers have therefore a lot of factors, all right? Letter B in this problem asks us to list all common factors of 24 and 40 and then to find the greatest common factor of 24 and 40. Now again, don't try to make things harder than they are. Greatest common factor. Common means the same between them, right? So one thing that we can see is that one is a common factor between them. One is a factor of all numbers though. So one is a common factor. Two is a common factor, etc. So take a moment and list out all the common factors, the factors that both 24 and 40 have in common with each other, and then write down the biggest one. Take a few minutes to do that. All right, let's do it. Well, as I mentioned, right, one is a common factor, two is a common factor, three isn't, but four is, uh, six is not, eight is a common factor, let's see, 12 is not, 24 is not, so that's it. So one, two, four, and eight, and obviously the greatest amongst those is eight, right? Eight is the greatest factor that is common to both 24 and 40. You might think of it as being the largest number that divides into both evenly, all right? And we'll talk about that more as the lesson goes on, but let's keep getting some work with greatest common factors. All right, divisors and factors. Recall that any whole number that divides another number without leaving a remainder is a factor of that number. The greatest common factor will be the largest whole number that divides both numbers without a remainder. So in exercise number two, it asks us to find the greatest common factor, often abbreviated as the GCF, for each of the following pairs of numbers by considering divisors of both numbers. All right, so let's think about this a little bit. 
Like, let's take a look at 18 and 24. I want to think about what their greatest common factor is without having to do that listing of factorizations and factors by just thinking about numbers that divide into both 18 and 24 without leaving us a remainder. Now, obviously, 1 divides into both of them. 2 divides into both of them because that'd be 2 times, nine, two times 9 and 2 times 12, right? 3 divides into both of them, 3 times 6 and 3 times 8. 4 goes into 24, but it doesn't go into 18. 5, well, 5 doesn't divide into either one of them nicely. 6 divides into 18, right? 3 times. And it divides into 24, 4 times. So 6 is a common divisor, right? 7 doesn't go into either. 8 goes into 24, but not 18. 9 doesn't go into 24, but it goes into 18. 10 doesn't go into either, 11 doesn't go into either, and 12 goes into 24, but it doesn't go into 18. Now thinking back on all of those, the largest of all the numbers that divides evenly into both 18 and 24 happens to be 6. So the greatest common factor of 18 and 24 is 6. And oftentimes to determine a GCF, a greatest common factor, that is the easiest way to do it, to just literally look at the two numbers and go, let's see, this, 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 this. All right, that's the biggest one, all right? <clears throat> so I'd like you to try that with both letter B and letter C. Try to find the largest whole numbers that divide into both 25 and 30 and 27 and 72. Pause the video now and take a shot at this. Well, in letter B, it's not too hard primarily because even though the number 30 has quite a few factors, 25 has very few, right? The only three numbers that divide nicely into 25 are 1, 5, and 25. That's it. 1, 5, and 25, right? Now, of those three numbers, 1, 5, and 25, only 1 and 5 divide into 30, with 5 obviously being the greatest. Right? So the GCF in this case would be equal to 5. Now, 27 and 72 are also kind of similar in that sense. I'd like to think about that smaller number, 27, because 27 is likely to have less prime factors than 72. It's also just going to be easier to think about, right? Think about it. Let's see, 27 is 1 times 27, 3 times 9, and that's it, right? So the only numbers that divide into 27 are 1, 3, 9, and 27, right? Now, 9 certainly goes into 72. It goes into 72 eight times, right? 9 times 8 is 72, all right? The only question is, does 27 go into 72? And it doesn't. So the greatest common factor, the largest number that divides into both 27 and 72 is the number 9. All right. So that's a good way to think about a greatest common factor, is to think, all right, what is the largest number that goes into these two without a remainder? All right. Now, if that's kind of confusing, though, there is a way to use prime factoring to figure out the GCF. So if you like that process with the factor trees and all that, that's what we're going to look at next. How can we use prime factoring to figure out the greatest common divisor? or the greatest, com uh, the greatest common factor. So let's do it. Using factory tree factoring trees, or factory trees, you know, whatever. Uh, using factoring trees to find the GCF. Exercise number three. Consider the whole numbers 24 and 40. Create a prime number factor tree for both and write down the prime factorization of both. All right, now, remember, we already kind of did 24 and 40, okay? We already figured out what the GCF is, but let's see how we can do it using prime factoring in a factoring tree. So let's go through the factor tree first. 24, we can factor that as 2 times 12. We can then factor 12 as 2 times 6, and we can factor 6 as 2 times 3. So the prime factorization of 24 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. All right? 
We cannot factor 24 any more than that. Let's now do it for 40. And again, I think I'll start with that whole two times business. 40 is 2 times 20. 20 can then be written as 2 times 10, and 10 can be written as 2 times 5. So the prime factorization of 40 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. All right, and you got a lot of practice on this in the last lesson. So let's now look at letter B. Circle what is common and use what is circled to identify the greatest common factor. Show your work below. All right, so this is cool. Now remember what we've really done here. I'm claiming that 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 is 24, and 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 is 40. Okay? But what's common to both? What's common to both is this. 2 times 2 times 2. That's what's common to both. Now, what is that as a number? So if we actually multiplied it all out, what we'd have is 2 times 2, which is 4, times 2, which is 8. And that is the greatest common factor. So we can use our prime factorization by just going in and saying, oh, that's what's common. That's the most that's common between these two numbers, right? Is 2 times 2 times 2. And 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, and therefore 8 is the greatest common factor of 24 and 40. All right? Let's see how we can use factor trees a little bit more to find this GCF. All right, exercise number four. Use factor trees to identify the greatest common factor of 48 and 60. All right, let's do it. So how about this? Let me factor out 48 in its prime factored form. Then I'm going to have you pause the video and do the same for 60. And I'm going to have you think about what that GCF is. So let's do 48 together. And again, I really like starting off with the two times business. So 48. I can look at is 2 times 24. All right, 24 then. We factored quite a few times, but I'm going to write that as 2 times 12. 12 can be factored as 2 times 6, and 6 can be factored as 2 times 3. Wow. So 48 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Let me just make sure. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, so there's my prime factorization of 48. I'd like you to pause the video right now and prime factor 60 for me. All right, and then see if you can use that prime factorization along with this one to figure out the GCF. Take a few minutes to do that. All right, let's go for it. 60, what do we have? Put a little line here. 60 is 2 times 30. What's 30? 30 is 3 times 10. What is 10? 10 is 2 times 5. So we're going to have 2 times 3 times 2 times 5. All right. So there's our prime factorization of 60. Now, how do we identify what's common? Well, really quickly, let me just change, num change color so it's maybe a little bit more obvious. Well, first, we've got a factor of 2 and a factor of 2, right? Then we've got another factor of 2 and another factor of 2, a factor of 3 and a factor of 3, and that's it. So literally what's common between them are two factors of 2 and a factor of 3. So the GCF is 2 times 2 times 3. And what is that? Well, 2 times 2 is 4, times 3 is 12. And that is my GCF. The largest number that divides nicely into both 48 and 60 is equal to 12. All right, And one very nice way of getting at that is prime factoring both numbers 
right? Because that's unique. We factor until we can't factor anymore, and then we just identify the prime factors that are common to the two numbers. That's it. All right. Let's wrap this lesson up. Way up here. Let's bring you down there. So in today's lesson, we looked at the idea of the greatest common factor. And we looked at it in a, in a few different ways, right? One way of looking at it, finding the greatest common factor between two numbers, was literally to write out the factorization of the two numbers and simply find the largest factor of the two, right? Another way of doing it was to think about what is the largest number that divides into both of these two whole numbers and leaves us with no remainder. And finally, a way that will work every time, but maybe takes a little bit longer, is to prime factor both of the two numbers, right, until we've broken them into products of just prime numbers, and then figure out what's common in terms of those prime numbers, multiply them back out, and that's our GCF. So three different ways of thinking about finding GCFs and working with them. And we will then use this GCF in our next lesson. For now, though, I want to thank you for joining me, Kirk Weiler, for another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. Until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.